Mm. All right, so I am restarting this live. I am going to actually post the link in Facebook. Again, I have no idea what happened with the last live. So I am going to post it so that you can all get the link. All right, so let us post it. Going to Facebook. And switch profiles. And I am going to post this. All right. Hmm. Okay, so this is okay. Let's see. All right. Okay, so I had to start back the live. I have no idea um, what happened with the sound. I really hope that you are able to hear me now. I know before it was a complete disaster. So I hope you can hear me. If you cannot hear me, uh, let me know. We are running a bit behind schedule as unfortunately the sound was not good. So for those of you who are just tuning in, welcome to Legally Speaking with attorney Antoinette Osborne. This information given on this program is for information purposes only. It does not constitute legal advice. Uh, during the live, you are more than welcome to ask a question, you can also call in at 718-502-9137. That's 718-502-9137. Good morning, Tracy. Thank you for joining us. I apologize. I have no idea why you were not hearing me. Uh, I hope you can all hear me now. If you are not able to hear me, please let me know. I have adjusted the sound settings, so I do believe that you should actually be hearing me now. Uh, I'll just text in here to see if you are hearing me. Uh, let me know if you are not able to hear me before I begin, so I am not just speaking. Yes, thank you, Mocha Delight. You are a pleasure. Lord Hoochal! Now we can start, right? All right. So for those of you who are just uh, joining us, we are a little bit delayed this morning. I was having a sound issue. I don't know what happened, child. Devil is working on a Sunday. Huh? Uh, but we are here and we are going to be broadcasting now. This morning, the information that I give on this program is for information purposes only. If you need legal advice, you can contact me, Antoinette Osborne, at 718-502-9137. That's the same number. If you have a question this morning in the live, you can actually put your question in the live. Or if you want to call in, you can call in at 718-502-9137. You can also text your question this morning to 718-502-9137. And to make an appointment with the office, it is the same number that you would call, which is 718-502-9137. Good morning. Thank you, Michelle, listening from Brooklyn. Please let us know where you are actually tuning in from. 
All right, so we have 17 people in the live. We are going to begin. So this morning, I wanted to focus on family in an immigration context. I wanted to speak about which family members you can file for, who it is that as a family member is able to petition for you. So this morning, just tuning in, please accept my apologies for the late start. We were having technical issues with the sound, and this is when God intervenes, and it is fixed. So everyone is hearing me now. All right. Good morning, June. June, you're able to hear. Thank you. All right. So this morning, I wanted to focus on the family sponsorship. That's immigration in a family context. Please ensure that you are liking the live. Please share the live so that someone who is able to benefit from the live will be able to do so. The purpose of this program is to keep our community informed. It is also to educate our community so that they are able to have their immigration applications done properly. They are more confident in what they are doing. And we seek to elevate our community. In this community, information is not spread a lot, whether it is because of lack of knowledge or people just mean. I, I, I find that you know people don't like to share information here even just basically your day-to-day -day living. I have a girlfriend who, no matter what, she calls me all the time. And I'm like, girl, you, you don't have nobody else to call. And she's like, nobody will provide the information. So I just find in our community, people do not like to share the information. It is not hard to provide someone with information where they it not will only elevate them, but by elevating themselves, they are able to help their family. We need strong families in our community. We need to support each other. And this is really the purpose of this program so that people can learn. As a reminder, this does not constitute legal advice. You want advice? Call the office, 718-502-9137. All right, so let's take a look at who a U.S. citizen can file for. You have a family member, they are a U.S. citizen, they want to know who it is that they can petition for so that that person can get legal status in the United States. So we're looking at the U.S. citizen. We'll first focus on the citizen, and then we will focus on the green card holder, who the green card holder can file for. So as a U.S. citizen, you may wonder who it is that you are able to file for. A U.S. citizen can file for their spouse. And what do we mean by spouse? You need a legal marriage, right? So if you are married to somebody else and you're marrying your married to spouse number one, you never divorce, and you married spouse number two, that is not a legal marriage. And one of the hardest things is where people, after going into immigration, they come and they retain the office because during the interview, it is the officer who makes them aware that the spouse is not single. Immigration is one of the worst places that you can find out that your spouse is still married to their former spouse. So to have a legal marriage, you need two single people, right? So a U.S. citizen can file for their spouse, but it has to be a legal spouse. If you are in the business of having many wives, immigration does not recognize that sort of relationship. One wife to the team, right? So if you have two wives, not here, not with immigration. No matter put in the application, you have not divorced the first wife. For those of you who you're looking to get married, you know your spouse was married before, there are certain documents that your spouse should be able to provide to you. If they are married, for example, in Jamaica, and they're bringing a decree nice side, send them back. 
because that is not a divorce. If it is that they are coming in New York purporting with a paper from the family court that they have a divorce judgment, the family court, yes, one time a client get con, marry this man, bring papers with a judgment of divorce. From she put the papers in front of me, I knew that this was nonsense because it was issued from family court. In New York, Supreme Court is the only court that has jurisdiction to issue a divorce. So may I try helping the son and not get con out there because the con is real. The people them dangerous. I'm afraid of them. So I'm trying to alert you. So you, if you are getting married to somebody and they have been married before, I want you to be able to look at certain documents so you can ascertain whether or not that person has terminated their marriage, yeah? If it is that the person says that their spouse died, you should see a death certificate, right? So you should see the marriage certificate to show that that is the wife they were married to. And then you see the death certificate that shows that that spouse is dead. A lot of us will get con in this place because we come from the islands or you may be just an immigrant from a different country. And what I find with immigrants is we come from a society often, when you come from, especially from a third world country, your word is your bond. So, so when someone comes to you and they approach you, and they are like, oh, they are divorced. We are easy to believe because we would not anticipate that someone is going to be so dishonest about their divorce. So this is why one thing I want you to keep, you're listening to this program. Good morning, Ronald. Good morning, Angela. You're listening to this program. This country run by paper. Yeah. It's a black and white thing. So someone comes to you and they say that they are divorced. They should have paper to back it. I am a person when I like the word I'm out. It's not what you know, it's what you can prove. And when people say certain things and they don't have the documentation to substantiate this, it is going to be a problem yeah and immigration is not the place where you want to go <laughs> had jesus and find out that your spouse is still married it's not a good look yeah just tuning in thank you for joining us this morning we are live you're listening to legally speaking with attorney antoinette osborne if you have a question this morning you are so welcome to text your question, or you can put your question in the live. I will answer it. All right, so someone says they don't think the volume is coming through. Is it that you are not hearing me? If you are not hearing me, let me know, because this text came in at 921, and they're saying that they're not able to hear me. So if it is that you are not hearing me, again, let me know. I... I'm under the impression that you are able to hear me. All right. So that's it. The U.S. citizen can file for their spouse. Who else can they file for? They can file for their children under 21 who is single, is determined to be an immediate relative. So this child, whether the child is here in the United States, a child is eligible for adjustment of status. If it is that they are outside the country, then you are able to file for them. They are going to be consular processing and they will be processing through the embassy. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Please remember to like and share the live and also subscribe. All right. So. What happens if you have a child under 21 and they are married? Now, one of the things with immigration is with we have different, there are different categories when you are filing for family members. There are certain family members who will come through 
uh, at a faster pace than others, and there are other family members who will take years. So if that child is under 21, but that child is married, that child is not an immediate relative. And I want you to understand that if you have a child who is under 21 and they are married, they are not coming here in approximately a year. It is going to take them about as a married child of a U.S. citizen. They are in the third preference category. And once they are married, regardless of age, you are filing for that child. It's now taking about 13 years plus. Yeah. So this is why when you're filing for your children and they are adults, they get frustrated because it is as if. If they are single, immigration is controlling their life because they want to come when they are over 21. They're looking at an eight-year filing. But in those eight years, people's lives change. They meet people. They meet a spouse. Yeah, nobody just, especially when you have religion backing you, whether you are a Christian or a Muslim, you know what? really engage in things like that when you are a staunch person who you observe your religion yeah so it's kind of tough to ask kids they're growing older and you ask them to wait but are you a US citizen we're gonna wrap go through who it is they can file for you can file for a spouse a spouse in a legal marriage a spouse where when you marry that spouse you and the other person were single whether they were married before and divorced or they had a death with a spouse or they were just never married before. You need single people to marry for immigration to recognize this. And unfortunately, some people don't understand when they're married, they are not single. Young girls. Young women who are dating. And you are dating someone and you want to establish a life with this person. Do not invest in someone if they are married. This is of no benefit to you. You have no inheritance benefits to get when they are married. Remember, marriage is an economic partnership. So it is his wife who is going to benefit, not you as a side girl. Yeah? So I want to encourage you, young people, unless you are here to rob and steal, this is not the relationship for you, yeah? If you are a family-oriented person, go look somebody single like yourself so you can build life, yeah? A lot of these people out here are not looking to build lives with you. But it depends on what your goals are. Some people don't care and they're not looking to build life. If that is your portion, you pick your poison. But for those of you who are single and you're marriage-minded, picking up a married person is not going to work out for you. Yeah? Uh, people who come with their complications and their problems, I don't think you should take that on. Yeah? Let people solve their problems before you go ahead and decide that you want to go and enter into a relationship with somebody. Single women who are engaging in relationships with married people, unless you're really looking to rob and steal, this is not the relationship for you. For people who are marriage-minded, looking to build a family, do not take up people with these complications. All right, so third person the U.S. citizen can file for. You can file for your parent. Your parent as a U.S. citizen is in a different category. There's no wait time. They're considered immediate relatives. So as a result of which you put in the paper, they're coming in in the same time like your spouse or your child under 21. Now, one of the benefits in filing for a parent is that a U.S. citizen has the option to file for four parents. Some people are lucky enough to have four parents. And how am I arriving at that number? If it is that your biological parents 
went ahead and got married to someone else when you were under 18. That is, they went ahead, married someone before their before your 18th birthday. Then here it is now, you have two additional parents who are your step parents. So as a result of which you are able to now file for your two biological parents and also your step parent, as long as that marriage took place before your 18th birthday. Now, one of the caveats to this is whenever you are looking to file for a step parent, the first thing you should do is to determine your age at the time of your parent to your step parent marriage in order to qualify them as a step parent for immigration purposes. If it is when you're doing your calculations, you see that you were over 18, then your stepmom is not a person that you can file for. Green card holders, you cannot. And let me be clear. You are not able to file for a parent. I want to be very clear on this. All right. So someone, Renald says, citizenship in the 1970s was $15, Massa. That price gone out of the window a long time. This is 2023, honey. It is $725. So let's get real here, Mr. Renault. Yeah, the money tap up. Yeah, Shabba tell us everything I raise. You know why you have to raise too. All right. So someone, Renault also says Canada has less restrictions. Ah, I'm not sure who want to go to Canada, Massa. No offense to the Canadians, but I, I see even the Canadians coming. So it is what it is. All right. Now, siblings. One of the good things in filing for your children and your siblings is that your children allows you to file in filing for your children you are allowed to file for your grandchildren right as long as by the time they're coming the immigration tool can get them under 21 for the grandchildren and similarly for your brothers and your sisters one of the extensions is you are able to file for your nieces and your nephews. So this is one of the plus. Being a citizen, you can file for your siblings. And some of the times we do not get along with our siblings. Yeah. But we love our niece. We love our nephew. So in essence, it is not really to benefit your sibling. It is to benefit because some of us, we have some nieces and nephews that are really bright and we want to give them an opportunity where they are able to advance themselves in the setting of a third world, first world country. For those of you who are just joining in, please remember to like the live, please share it so someone is able to benefit please in addition as well don't forget to subscribe all right so a green card holder you cannot file for your siblings and i'll tell you this one of the things the siblings is taking 15 years the adult children of U.S. citizens, it's taking about eight years. The adult children of green card holders, and when I say adult, I mean children over 21. These children are taking about seven and a half years. And the reason why it's shorter for the green card holders, the reason is you have less people subscribed every year because everybody's running to get their citizenship. So... For the citizen children who are over 21, it's oversubscribed. 
and that is specifically why you have a longer wait yeah so for those of you who are filing for your children and your citizens and you are wondering why is it taking so long uno over subscribe simple yeah a lot of people run and they get their citizenship and I'll, I'll encourage anyone to get their citizenship the reason being is i tell people this all the time you can be always walking on the right side of the law but you can be somewhere at the wrong time i know it is you are arrested for a deportable offense the benefits of citizenship also allows you, once you get your citizenship, you are able to, if you want to go and live in your home country forever, you can do so. If you have that green card, you can't be out of the country for more than six months. So these are just some of the benefits of you filing for your citizenship. So just don't restrict yourself because it takes a lesser time to bring your adult children here, why you want to retain that green card, don't do it. And one of the things that these children will do to you is during the process, they will go ahead and they will get married. As long as they get married after you get the citizenship, that petition is still valid. If they go ahead and then get married, Whilst you are a green card holder, they just kill the petition. You can't fix it. It can't cure. So, I and this is when you're filing for your children and the, you are a green card holder. You have to have a conversation with them. They are not here. They don't know the rules. And people really want to move on with their life. Encourage them. If it is that they intend to marry, they have to know that instead of waiting uh, seven and a half years, one, they get married whilst they are green card holder filing for them. Unfortunately, they're going to kill the petition. Your money just gone down the drain. If it is they really want to get married, tell them to hold off till you file for your citizenship so they don't waste your money. So you are still able to continue with the process for them. So just tuning in, you are listening to Legally Speaking with Attorney Antoinette Osborne. If you have a question this morning, you are more than welcome to put it in the live. In addition to which, you can also call in if you have a question. You can also text your question to 718-502-9137. And to make an appointment during the week, the telephone number is 718-502-9137. Thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning, Renee. Don't forget to let me know where you are listening from. All right. With the siblings, if it is as it's such a long time that people are waiting when they are in what is referred to as a preference category who is in a preference category for immigration and family members you have your adult children of u.s citizen they're in the first preference for green card holders your spouses are not considered immediate relatives you have to wait on a visa number you are in the second preference category. It does take approximately two years for your spouse and your children under 21. For your kids who are over 21, green card holders, it's taking approximately seven and a half years because the numbers are not so oversubscribed as it is the citizen children. Good morning, Jackie, listening from Dallas. Oh, I love Dallas. I will tell you this. The best food, and I say best food in terms of American food I have ever had in my life is, uh, oh, Dallas, Georgia. I'm sorry, honey. I meant Dallas, Texas. Yes. All right. Now, for those of you who are filing for your children yeah 
if you are filing for, let's say your spouse, you're a US citizen and you're filing for your spouse and you're filing for your child who is under 21, that is two separate applications. This is different if you are a green card holder. If you are a green card holder, it's the one application that you file for your spouse and your child. Why? The green card holder spouse and children are different from the citizenship children. The citizenship spouse, the citizen spouse and child are immediate relatives. So they get two separate applications. They come to the United States quicker as long as that child is under 21. And let's look at the, the, the practicality behind this. If you are a spouse, you need to come here quicker. Because we're not fat and foul for mango. Sorry. For those of you, and it amazes me, I'll have people married for five, six years. And you're just filing for your spouse. I'll tell you this, that spouse on paper is a second wife. There is absolutely no way. Somehow not who a second wife position. I mean, I care say your name on paper, girl. You're old second wife position. Or if I marry a man and I'm wait five years to file for you. I don't know about anybody but winter cola America. Yeah? Life blanket we are deal with. So... I uh, offer your uh, spouse national grid. Why then can't keep them warm in a winter? You're not there. Lord, we're not letting the puss out of the bag this morning. So, your long distance, your spouse taking five years to you. Yeah, girl, you know, see how fat and fall from mongoose. Your second wife, in a work so who's gonna wait that long? I, let me keep out of people business. Yeah, but green card hold their spouses. It takes two years. So, girl, you have a little wait for wait. Yeah. For the people who like to watch people and say how your friend got faster. There are certain contingencies that may arise in the application. It could be that your spouse just not put in the papers. Not for not get trick, and them not put in a paper for you. So you're sitting and waiting like the great Bob Marley. Girl, no paper don't put in for you. It could be that they're, they're having difficulties in the application. Them don't know what they're doing. So there's a whole heap of requisitions that are coming in, or they're just putting in the wrong papers. So that could have been a reason why there is a delay. Another reason is immigration suspect fraud. So they might investigate you. So these are the things that can happen. So Jackie says, everyone usually thinks it's Texas once Dallas is mentioned. Yes, child, be be best American food I ever eat in my life came out of Dallas, Texas. All right. Now, we want to take a look at... <sighs> public policy marriages I find this is happening a lot and people now are using certain sites to check the background of people they are seeing and you can't blame them I swear this is a country that people lie for absolutely no reason and you have to investigate them yeah i'll never forget my sister told me once that one of her friends was dating this guy and the guy was extremely possessive yeah like the man who act like her clothes everywhere she there, him there. So you know me smell a rat, yeah? 
And I said to my sister, I want you to tell your friend, because sitting in the seat, I sit. Not every story is a good story. So I told her, tell your friend to just run a little background check. Yeah? I'm not saying she will be the FBI. But I smell a rat. I'm going to go by my spirit. Yeah? And the spirit will lead me. About a week later, she come. American girl. Down south. My sister lives down south. And she go, oh my God. Girl. This man sure has been arrested six times for domestic violence. Yes. Me tell him I smell a rat panda boy there. Yes. My instinct never lie yet. Your man shall have to run from the boy. So before she end up in a relationship like that, sometimes you have to know when you're caught. You have to know when for cutting a relationship. You next? Somebody probably gets arrested once for domestic violence. Because sometimes people are argue, people are point finger. Probably not that serious. You're not touch the person. But you got arrested six times? No. You're not good. Something all right, yes, sir. This is a pattern. And I'll tell you something, young men and young women who are, you are in your relationships. If you are ever in a relationship and you have to call the police, especially as black people in America, if you are in a relationship and you have to call the police, and I think them call it partner, you know, Jamaica, me say me man. You have to call the police on your person. You must know when to exit. There's no way I'm going to be in a relationship with somebody. They've called the police on me. And I continue that way. You will never see me again. You don't know who you're dealing with. And young people, I want you to be serious in your relationships. Because sometimes what you put in is what you get out. And if you're in a relationship and you have to resort to calling the police, this is not the relationship for you. I'm going to play that. And I'm going to encourage you. Morning, KK. I'm going to encourage you. Don't. Stay in such a relationship. I think the problem with some of us, as women especially, you don't know when to leave. You don't see the signs as to when you are supposed to leave. You think that you're Jesus Christ. You can't change. You can't change nastiness. When I ask Christ, you can't change nastiness and some people are suffering in silence don't do it and sometimes you think you are in these relationships and you are benefiting your children your child wants to leave more than you and i'm gonna encourage you choose wisely i find people focus on the wrong things uh, caller, you have to either pause or mute your volume on your YouTube. I am getting a feedback. Good morning. Can you hear me? Can hear you. Good morning. Good morning, sister. How can I help you this morning? So I have a question. Sure. My mother, my mother, she has a green card for a number of years now, but I still have some sisters in Jamaica that um, would like to come here, mm -hmm. but um, she's not a citizen, as I said. So how can she go about getting them? They're all over 21, though. Okay. And are any of your sisters married? No. Okay. So she can petition for them as a green card holder, if at, and it's going to take approximately seven and a half years if at the time they are able to come, uh, she does not make it up, possibly you or another family member can join in and act as a sponsor. But she can petition for them. Absolutely. Why not? 
All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Darling. So Take. also there is another sister that is here. Mm-hmm. But um, she does not have any status. Can she? What can she do for that that child? I'll tell you this. So that sister, if she falls for her, when your sister card today comes, your sister has to get what is called a provisional waiver because unless she had a prior filing before April thirtieth, two thousand and one. She's not 245I. She has to interview outside of the United States at an embassy, but she's going to need a waiver before she leaves. Otherwise, she's going to be subject to a 10-year bar. All right? Wow. Yes. Okay. All right? Take care, my love. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And this is why when we have adult children who are looking to remain here in the United States. You have to consult an attorney. Adult children cannot adjust here. When they file their paperwork, they are treated as if they are being processed outside of the country. And one of the difficulties is they're going to be here all this time. They don't get a work permit. Let's get real. They don't get a work permit Oftentimes, they are going to try to work off the books. They are not in the category of people who are allowed to work legally in the United States. So now they are inadmissible. The only people who can work in the United States who are out of status, they have no work authorization, and it is absolutely forgiven by immigration, are... Spouses of U.S. citizens, children under 21 of U.S. citizens, and parents of U.S. citizens. So it's tough for an adult child where they are here, they really want to get their paperwork in order, but unfortunately they can't adjust here, not unless they're 245i. And one of the difficulties, they have to go back to their home country on an embassy to interview and a lot of time they don't want to uh leave the country so it's a little bit tricky so before you have your siblings overstaying and they're expecting that you're gonna file for them or you have your adult children who are overstaying and they expect that you're gonna file and they think they're gonna be able to adjust not under current law unless they are 245i yeah for those of you who are looking to file for your stepchildren you probably met someone you want to build a life and i'm gonna encourage anyone who is marrying and they are these days prenups are very important why marriage is an economic partnership and in getting married it creates certain rights yeah i think gone are the days where people are serious in investing in the marriage the least little issue you don't try to work it out The village lawyers are not only there to give you bad legal advice, they are there to give you bad marital advice. It is my firm belief that single people should not be advising married people. You need to take advice from people who are in the long haul of it, who have gone through the test of time in their marriage. They are able to overcome. They have the experience. Be careful how you take advice from people who are single, people who have had constant failed relationships. It doesn't benefit you. Speak to someone who is married. Speak to someone who has gone through the test of time with their spouse. Can't encourage you enough. Yeah? All right. Stepchildren, you're looking to marry their mother or are you looking to marry their dad 
You have to ensure, if you want to file for that child, you have to ensure the child is under 18 in order for you to file. Otherwise, they are going to have to wait for their parent to get the green card to file for them. Yeah? If you are looking to file for a child that you've adopted, you have to ensure that the adoption is completed before the child's 16th birthday. That's one. You have to ensure that that child is in your physical custody. You have ex you have exercised a custodial relationship with that person at some point, yeah, uh, during two years, right, prior to the filing. All right. Someone, Renault says, 26 Federal Plaza is no joke. I'll tell you 26 Federal Plaza is no joke. But you, especially once you reach the 12th floor or the 14th floor of 26 Federal Plaza, yeah, that's court. That's not a game. And I find people don't understand how serious immigration is. I find that they think it's a game. And when you put in applications that spoil, it actually follows you for your entire life with immigration. And especially when you engage in misrepresentation, if you do not qualify for a waiver, yeah, and you have a misrepresentation, or you have fraud in your background, you have serious consequences because you can't get that waiver. You can't get the green card. And that's the reality of it. Yeah? All right. Now, one of the things, for those of you who are dating people, I find people don't ask people questions. Yeah? Yeah? When you're dating somebody, and not just dating where you just, all right, this is a little date, you know, saying, I'll keep the man, you know, you just have upon a date. It's different, especially when you're looking to establish a life together. You need to ascertain someone's criminal history. This is not the place where. You can't just pick up somebody and start date them like that. No. And especially if you know there is an immigration aspect to it, you are going to be filing for someone. I want you to ask question. I want you to certain checks. Especially women who are dating men. And the men sometimes have to do. There are certain checks that I think people should do. I think everybody should check the sex offender registry when you're dating someone. Yeah, I had a client from Africa and he was like, Antoinette, I'm thinking about marrying this girl. You know, are there any issues that I should look for? And I know there are certain things that will prevent a US citizen from filing for you where it's such an uphill battle. For someone who is subject to the Adam Walsh Act bar, that's not a game. And when you find that they have sexual offenses involving minors, first of all, I would not want to speak to anybody who has had a sexual offense crime involving a minor. And young ladies, I'm encouraging you, this is not the person for you. So he went ahead and he checked her out. And this was a girl who had a sexual assault case involving a 13-year-old child. So don't just think and take people at face value. Not in this place. Them risk them and take a Jamaica. Mm -mm. Not here. Yeah? You can't just take people at face value here. You need to check the sex offender registry. You need to check the Department of Corrections website to see if them have no crime. Don't take their word for it. Yeah? 
this is a serious place. I don't think it's a game. I think people need to understand when you are dating people here, it's a different ball game. Yeah? Another additional factor one should question people on, and it depends on your lifestyle. Some people do engage in different type of relationships. But you have to investigate their background in terms of check out their orientation. Some men are not just out here dating women. And if it is that you realize this is the type of relationship you want, you have to verify certain things. We are in serious times. And I don't think people understand how serious it is. Yeah? You have to check out people's background. I don't think people are interested in doing that. But when it comes to marriage, I don't think people are in an era where we respect the institution of marriage. I think the family structure now is totally broken. I it's my personal opinion that family life, growing up in Jamaica versus seeing the family structure here, it's a different ball game. Yeah. And I am going to encourage my community make time for your family, make time for your children. You have a lot of predators out there. You have to educate your children. You are looking to build a life with somebody. You really need to find out their background. So just tuning in, we are coming to the end of the live. We had a late start this morning. I'd like to apologize. We had issues with the sound. Thank God it is actually working now. But... Anyone who has an immigration application to make, I want to encourage you, yeah? You have to be extremely thorough. Look at your documents when you're filing for family members. I'll tell you an issue that I am having too much with our young men. And I have done applications all over the world whether it is Canada, whether it is the UK, whether it is India, whether it is... Uh, we, we have five for everybody to get legal status in America. But one of the issues I have with my young men from Jamaica, not because a lot of states here have accepted marijuana use. I want you to understand that it's not accepted by the federal government. It is still a controlled substance. And the issue I'm having with my young men from Jamaica is they are doing their medicals. They are failing because of marijuana use, and then they get stuck in Jamaica for an additional year. Why? Because the embassy makes you retest in a year. One of the dangers with this is where children are aging out, and you have this nonsense that, because what I find is young people, you know everything and you don't know shit. Excuse my language. Oh, God, it's Sunday. Oh, Lord. You think you know everything and you know nothing. And when people try to give you some guidance, you on your, your high horse, you're strong in your wrong. Yeah? I have never seen people strong in their wrong like young people. So here it is now that you go ahead and you do your medical and 
on the medical is information that there's marijuana use. And now you get stuck. Yeah? And your relatives have to be paying for retesting for the medical. I don't understand. Yeah? One of the first things, especially when I am filing for a young man. Yeah, them days my offer ask. Back in a certain time, you never offer ask certain things. Now you have to ask. You smoke weed. You smoke marijuana, the good sense, the herb, yeah, the ganja. Yeah. I have to ask them this. Caller, you are on the air, my love. Yes, my lady. Good morning. Morning, sir. Yeah. Um, I'm living in the United States here. Mm -hmm. And I have my mom lives there, but she is ill. But my sister is here and um is visa. So I would like you to know, I'd like to know from you, how can I get her to stay, um, to take care of my mom? Uh, your mom is ill. She could look for an extension of her status to provide care for the mom. Uh, if your mom files, because if you file for her, it's 15 years and she can't pick up here. If your mom files for her, uh, she is going to take your mom is a citizen or a green card holder? She's a green card holder. Okay. So she's a green card holder. It's taking seven and a half years. But the problem is your sister is not able to adjust here. Uh, there is the avenue. She's outside of the country. She could look to apply once your mother has filed for her to apply for parole so that she can take care of the mom. But for her to just stay here and the mom to file for her like that, she's not getting a work permit. She's going to need a provisional waiver. If there is an existing filing for her and she's outside of the country, then okay, she could okay. apply for parole to be paroled in. All right? Okay, thank you. You're okay, welcome, darling. You. Bye. Okay. All right, so someone, Tracy, asks, how soon can a permanent resident file for an adjustment for a spouse? As a green card holder, your spouse can't adjust. I'm not going to be any simpler than that. Once you are a green card holder, your spouse cannot adjust in the United States. It is expected for them to cancel a process, to go to the embassy, so that they can do their interview. As simple as that. Yeah. Uh, I think Ronald asks concerning WPAT 9.30 a.m. I am on there for two weeks. This is my last Sunday on uh, 9.30 a.m. for WPAT. And I am on at 7 o'clock tonight. Yeah. So a green card holder cannot file for a spouse to cause that spouse to adjust unless the spouse is what is referred to as 245I. They had a prior filing before April 30th, 2001. If this is not the case, and of course they can show that they're physical present on December 20th, 2000. They can't show this and, and there's also a requirement for continuous presence. If they can't show this, it's not going to happen for them. They have to cancel a process. One of the things I'm going to encourage you to do as the spouse is to apply for your citizenship. And once you are a citizen, then your spouse will be able to adjust. Depending on how long you have the green card, once you've had it for five years plus and there are no inadmissibility issues, then yes, you can file for your spouse and she can adjust once you become a citizen. And for those of you who are marrying green card holders and there is an anticipation that they can file for you because they're going to get their citizenship. Not everybody goes and does that citizenship exam and pass. For someone who is going to, you're going to look to marry and ultimately you anticipate that they're going to get their citizenship, you need a consultation with an attorney into their background. 
you need to determine whether or not there are any criminal history that will make them ineligible for citizenship. You need to ensure if there are any fraud in their background that would make them ineligible for citizenship. You need to uh, verify whether or not, yeah, they've engaged in certain activities such as bigamy. Bigamy, unless there is a valid explanation, that also prevents a hurdle for you to get your citizenship. So for anybody who is seeing a green card holder, you are depending on them to get their citizenship. I am going to recommend you consult with an attorney to ensure that they do qualify for citizenship. What you will find is a lot of them, especially if they have problems with his, doing the history test or the reading and writing test, I think anyone who has an issue with that should ensure that if you know, and one of the things I find with children in the rural area is oftentimes, especially in Jamaica, there is no funds, yeah, to pay that tuition, give them lunch money. So you have a lot of children who did not finish school and yet we have a lot of adults that cannot read if you have a friend or a family member and they have issues with reading with their comprehension i think as a friend or family member you should be encouraging them that they go ahead one and they improve their reading skills improve their comprehension skills you have a lot of people who are depending on people to read for you don't do it i like independence not everybody who is around you are people that you can trust i am going to encourage you just to be careful who you keep around you the bible tell you it is those that are close to you that will fail you. I have had clients where them send them whole life savings back to them home country to build a house. When they go down there and they look, you say, take me to the land. Look how much money me send. Take me to the land. There's no land. Let's get real. Yeah? You have your whole, your whole, sometimes you just say your whole a man or your whole a woman, your spouse your wife, they are the ones sometimes who are the enemy in your house. And you think you are building with people and you are not. And here it is, you're investing in someone and that person is not investing in you. And you have to be realistic with some of the relationships you have because some of your spouses are in that home and they're looking to sabotage you. And this is why sometimes a prenup is so important in your relationship because where you have invested for years and a lot of you, you're carrying deadbeat in your marriage. I'm not talking about the housewife who is working. She's not a deadbeat. Because for take care of how she wash, cook, clean, and she a quint. So she a work. What's if the quint, bud? She a work. Me not care. She working. That's her job. She raising your kids. Your kids are healthy. The house is clean. You come home, you get fed. I'm talking about a deadbeat who does absolutely nothing for your relationship. They don't contribute. You're in that relationship, you're paying all the bills by yourself. There are no homemaking skills happening, even though you're the one paying the bills. And I find people are not protecting their assets. And when you are in these relationships and one of the hardest thing I ever had to hear, we had a friend and was a go-getter from Jamaica. We sent him reach foreign. Hey! We're not talking a pure pure boy now. We're talking well-educated boy. Yeah? So they reach foreign. 
I don't know, sometimes some people reach fine and find themselves. Me don't rather you stay last. Me don't want you find yourself, yes, sir. My man reach a fine and find himself. All of a sudden, big, big educated man. Young girl don't watch the education, watch the ambition. You can't buy that. I don't mean I tell someone because someone don't know. Me rather take up a man broke, but him ambitious. Than a rich man who don't know hard life. Can you lose all that money? You're confused. You don't know how to get it back. I prefer hustlers. Yeah. I take a hustler any day, a boy who, a man who knows, say, no matter what him family have to eat. And some man who want to just, you don't know, professional students, only per degree, but fool in a real life. I know for telling now. It's rough out there. But one of the hardest things, you're filing for your spouse. You bring your spouse to the country. You had plans and when your spouse reach, your spouse not contribute. You have a child to feed and your spouse is not contribute. Thing, anything. Call her, you're on the air, love. Hello? All right, so someone, Pauline W. asks, when a person comes through the border, what can he do to get a work permit? Most of these border crossers are filing for asylum. And... Uh, one of the dangers with asylum is if it is a frivolous asylum application, you'll never ever get a green card, so you have to be careful. But why they're filing asylum is they're getting a work permit. And a work permit now is good for five years. Any work permit application after October 1st, remember when work permit was one year, then it moved to two year. No, the work permits. Any work permit card issued after October 1st. Yeah. Or any work permit card that is uh it's it's pending or you're putting it after October 1st. It is a five-year work permit, right? So, okay, it is 10.19. This is going to be the end of the live. I don't want to take up more than one hour of your Sunday morning. Thank you so much for tuning in. I apologize for the delay that we had. And if you wish to make an appointment during the week, the number to call is 718-502-9100. Nine one three seven. Have a blessed Sunday.